Hey guys, today is the 16th of October and we're going to start doing the second part of this vlog so I'm just a little bit tired and all and it was a very long day but I quickly wanted to talk about a book that I forgot to mention in my um, wrap up yesterday um, which was um, The Mummy's Tomb. <laughs> So over the edge right now. Um, I read that completely in the bath tab. I had around another 100 pages of that and this is one of the Goosebumps books and I wanted to read a lot of those during this month and then I also started The Ghost Next Door but I only read about I don't know maybe 20-30 pages of that so um, that I will finish um, later in this week. Right now I'm at the other place again. <laughs> um, I did come here yesterday and today I was working. So my goal yesterday was to read the first 100 pages of The Unburied by Charles Palliser because I would read it off to finish that this week because I still have books that I wanted to get to this month. Um, and I feel like I'm a little bit behind, but I did not manage to read 100 pages of this. I don't know why I'm very slow with this book. Um, I have no idea what's really going on right now. So I've read um, 78 pages yesterday, which is still good. Um, so my goal for today is to read another 50 pages. So right now we are following a main character, his name is Ned, and he is visiting an old friend of his, Austin. They haven't talked in a very long time, I think like 20 years or something, and yeah, something weird happened in their past. But also Ned is really interested in the old church that is nearby where Austin lives. So. Yeah, that's that's what I gathered so far. So I hope I can do another 50 pages tonight and then maybe tell you a little bit more of what this is even about. This is kind of disappointing. Yum, 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 yum. Hey guys, so yesterday I managed to read another 50 pages of The Unburied. With this book, 50 pages take me one and a half hours. <laughs> I don't know, there's so much words on one page. Um, but yeah, so I'm a good chunk into it by now. Um, so tonight I think I can make it to about the halfway point of the book. Right now I have no clue what's going on. There's this whole old ghost story and there's also the story of this historian trying to find a manuscript from like the 11th century something like that I don't know it's just all so intertwined and difficult to understand and right now I'm not quite sure when the thriller really comes in but I hope soon Hey guys, so a super quick update. Yesterday I've read another 50 pages of The Unburied. Um, I have the feeling that things are going to start to make a lot more sense now. The dynamic of the main character and his friend Austin is really terrifying because you never know whether you can trust him or not. And there's also these other characters and you really have no idea who's trustworthy and who is just setting up a trap. So the atmosphere of this book is definitely great, but it is a little bit hard to really get into. So I hope that I can read at least another 70 pages today, um, tonight when I go home on the train, and then I also want to listen to some more of the Redman voice tonight, because right now I think I'm a little bit over the halfway point, and I think I can listen to another maybe half an hour or so. We'll see. Um, yeah, but I'm loving it. I'm loving the Raven Boys. It's really good. And I've already gotten the second one, which I think is the Dream Thieves. So, yeah. Hey there guys, what's up? We're back with horrible lighting again. But I wanted to do a quick update before um, I forget everything or fall asleep or something. So, 
First and foremost, I've read another 100 pages of The Unburied yesterday. So now I've got just a little over 100 pages of it left. Um, it's definitely picking up, but I feel like there is something that is very, very obvious. And the, uh, um, the main character doesn't get it, which is a little bit annoying and I'm... About to see where that leads, um, but I hope that he will pick up on it soon. Because it is super obvious and that is something I dislike about any kind of murder story. When it is obvious what's happening and the main character can't see it. So yeah, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this book yet, but I think the end will decide everything. So then today I mainly listened to my audiobook, um, which you can't see right now. But I can make you see it, maybe. No, I can't. Um, which is The Raven Boys. I have around one and a half hours left of it now. It was really heart wrenching. Um, what happened to Adam in this last part now? Um, I'm very much interested to see where his character goes from now. But it definitely tore at my heartstrings, and I think it was portrayed quite quite catchy, catchingly I, I don't know how to say it like like it was just rough to listen to and yeah I can't wait to see where it goes from here so that's what I've been up to so tomorrow I'll probably listen to another half hour maybe a little bit more of that so I think I might finish the audiobook this weekend Probably, yeah, probably I will finish it this weekend. I already got the second one of the series and I will continue listening to that one. Then for the weekend, I definitely want to finish this little Goosebumps book. This is The Ghost Next Door. Um, I started this, I'm at page 30 right now and it's like 120 pages, so around 90 pages left, which I actually want to finish maybe tonight or tomorrow morning and then obviously again I want to concentrate on reading more of the Penny Dreadfuls. I won't finish this till the month is over, like not at all, <laughs> but I definitely want to make a little bit more progress and I'm still gonna count this as um, like a success because there are a lot of individual stories in there that I could have gotten as individual books. And so I feel like I can still count that, you know, even though I'm not finishing the complete collection right now. So, yeah, and then definitely I want to finish The Unburied before Sunday, probably on Saturday in the bathtub, I believe. So that would be my reading plans. And we'll see how they go for this weekend. And look who's super cute on her pillow. She's so fast asleep. Hey there guys, it's time for another quick update. Now, I didn't do one yesterday, I don't know why. But mainly I managed to finish um, The Ghost Next Door, which was so good. I really, really love this Goosebumps book. I think it's one of my top favorite ones. It definitely gave me some chills. I love ghost stories. And even though it is quite obvious what it's about, I still think that the end is really, really good. It definitely stands out from the other books that I've read so far from the Goosebumps series. So I gave it 4.5 stars. Then I managed to listen to a lot of the Raven Boys. I only have about 40 minutes left now, so I'm definitely going to finish it this weekend. And as I said, I've already gotten the second one, but I don't know, it just gave me so many feels and I'm a little bit afraid of listening to the end of it. But yeah, shit is definitely going down and I can't see, I can't see, I can't wait to see where this story goes. Then I also managed to read, I think, two stories from The Penny Dreadfuls. In the morning I have read The Diary of a Madman by Guy de Montpassant. And this was interesting. Now this is 
basically made like a diary. It's only four pages long and you get like a short introduction. And this is mainly about showing how uh, like the wealthy people are never suspected to be murderers. And I have encountered this in a couple of TV shows lately. Now there is this one um, episode from Sherlock in the last season that dealt with this problem. Also, we've recently watched um, Freak Show, the American Horror Story season, which deals with this topic. And now this little short story, which also kind of shows that, that the wealthy people are just believed to be the good ones. And you think that all the crimes that are, you know, committed are committed by poor people or crazy people or anything like that. But it's not true. Definitely not. So I think that was interesting. I think I would give it around three stars because it wasn't life-changing, but it was interesting. And then last night I read The Case of Lady Senex by Arthur Conan Doyle. Now this is not, not really a scary story, but this is rather a story about a couple, but the woman Lady Senex is married to another man and it is all about how this leads up to a very gruesome scene. And you hear in the beginning that Lady Senex decides never to show herself in public again and the man she is with, Douglas Stone, he um, basically loses his mind, kind of, and then you see what led up to this point. And this was interesting as well. I think I would give it around a 3.5 stars, like more of a four star rating. Um, but as I said, it wasn't really like a horror story. It is gruesome in a way and probably painful for the poor lady Senex, but there's nothing like supernatural or anything about it. And I thought it was quite obvious from a certain point where this is going. But yeah, these were the two Penny Dreadful stories I've read. And then there's one more before um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So I read that one definitely this weekend. So, you know, next weekend I have Jekyll and Hyde. And then for tonight, I am going to my bathtub again. And I want to finish The Unburied by Charles Palliser, which I haven't read any more of since coming home, basically but I want to finish it before I leave. Hey there guys, just a quick update. This is a Halloween tutorial I just did, so don't be scared. Um, yeah, I just wanted to quickly talk to you about my reading. I have finished The Unburied um, in this morning and I read most of it last night. And so I am done with it. I would give it around a 3.5 or 4 star. I haven't decided yet. It's still kind of in between. The story is interesting, but I think it had a couple of issues. For one, the main protagonist, he's a very weak character. He's kind of pushed around by all the other characters, which is annoying and something that I cannot identify with. I don't feel like a weak man. Um, the other point is that I was kind of overwhelmed with these st three storylines. One is in the 1100s or even before that. One is in the 1600s and then one is in the 1900s. So, not 100th century, whatever. So that was kind of confusing to get it all right and to get all the names for the um, periods and stuff like that. And also the main issue I had with it is that I saw the conclusion very early on in the book and the main character took a long time to get there and then he even didn't tell anyone about it but he kind of kept it for himself and wrote this whole thing that you're reading and um, had it sealed up until the point that he and all the main suspects were dead and yeah, that was kind of disappointing because you want to see the bad guys being dealt with. And in this story, they got away and they actually got really rich because of it. So that was disappointing. Then I read, I think, another story of the Penny Dreadfuls. Um, 
or even two, no, one, one more story, which is George Dobson's Expedition to Hell by James Hogg. This is a little bit of a longer story, but not really, it's like eight pages or something like that. This is about a um, man who's driving a carriage and he um, is called by this one man and his son and they want him to go a certain road and at the end of it he is not able to escape and he is told that he's actually in hell now and he has to um, sign a document that says that he have to has to come back until noon the following day um, so he can leave for the last time and then he is supposed to come back to hell and stay there. This definitely had a lot of atmosphere, this deals with the strangeness of dreams and I liked it but I didn't love it. So I, I, I would give it like a 3.5 stars probably. And so now I'm at the point to start um, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde but I will keep that for when I return on Wednesday and then for the week I want to take with me Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, a story selected by April Genevieve Tukolki, Tukolk, Tukolka, <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so this is the last book on my TBR apart from the graphic novel that I'm reading uh, or that I want to read. Um, so yeah, uh, I want to take this with me for the couple of days that I'm gone again. I'm leaving in an hour or two and so this will uh, hopefully give me some chills while I'm away. Hey there guys, you know what it feels like when you know that you're going to be sick or like you're getting sick, you're having a cold but not really? That's exactly how I feel right now, like my throat hurts a little bit. And I'm not feeling bad right now, but I know that I'm going to have a cold soon, and it's so annoying. But I'm here to talk about um, Slasher Girls and Monster Boys. So yesterday I finished the first three stories. The first one was The Birds of Azalea Street by Nova Ren Zuma. I don't know what, what else she has written. I, I guess it's a woman. I guess so. Um... This story was kind of underwhelming for me. I was expecting a little bit more. It was just like your usual small town perf story with birds. I don't know. It just... It really didn't give me anything. And I don't know whether this was a good representation. Because, you know, you have your average white dude who is single in a neighborhood of families and obviously he's a perf. I don't know. I think that's... I don't know. So I would give it like a three stars maybe. Then I read In the Forest Dark and Deep by Carrie Ryan and oh my god. <laughs> this is the Alice in Wonderland inspired story and it was so creepy. It was so fucking creepy. I think it's rather long. Um, like around 30 pages. Um, it's basically about a human-sized white rabbit who kills people and I am absolutely horrified <laughs> when it comes to like kind of animal-human hybrid thingies. So this really creeped me out and I think it's such a good story and I would give it 5 out of 5 stars just because it was so creepy. And so I wanted to go to bed after that, but I knew that I couldn't sleep, so I read another one. And that's Emmeline by Kate Winders. This is another 20 pages. And this is kind of a war story. I think it takes place in 1914. It's, um, I would say, like a ghost story. I thought it was very easy to see what was going on. Um, there was sex in this story, like I thought these were all YA stories, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, it wasn't like very graphic or anything like that, but it's it's obvious what they're doing. Um, I felt like the motive of the girl was a little bit weird. Um, I think another like five pages would have been great with this one. I think 
I mean, I liked it a little bit more than the first one, so maybe I'd give it like a 3.5 or maybe a 4 star. Um, but it definitely wasn't as creepy as uh, in the forest dark and deep. That was so scary, but I've heard that this is the worst one, so I hope that with the other ones I will be able to sleep at night. So for today, I want to read another um, two stories of this, we'll see. Um, that's a little bit more than 50 pages. And then I also finished listening to The Raven Boys. I don't think I've talked about that, <laughs> so I'm going to talk about it now. Um, I did love it. I give it a 4.5 stars um, because I think there is still potential to be better and it's not a life-changing book. Like five star books for me are like life-changingly good. I wasn't just quite there yet but very close. Um, yeah, I think the story is phenomenal. I love Noah. <laughs> for some reason he turned out to be my favorite character. I cared for him so much. Um, but yeah, maybe the ending was a little bit rushed and I want to see what happened to Neve. Um, but yeah, I already started The Dream Thieves. Um, there is a little bit of a weird... I don't know, like when you finish one book and you immediately go on to the next one, but it is made so that people picking up after a year will get back into the story, so it, it doesn't really fit together. But I think I'm at a point now where I can get back into the story, um, where all the introductory parts are over. I I think I'm like half an hour or maybe, maybe 45, 45 minutes into it. So, yeah, that was what I did for reading yesterday. That's really interesting lighting right now. I'm here to complain. I definitely feel worse than yesterday. And I think I sound even worse than yesterday. And I really am so annoyed right now because I hate being sick. And I am rarely sick. Usually it's like one time a year, if even. So tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll have my first lecture this year or this um, semester. And I'm super excited to be in front of like 25 people and be like, oh, well, this is me. I'm sick. Do your thing. Because I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be lots of fun. But apart from complaining and feeling sorry for myself, I have to talk about reading, obviously. Mm. I read one more story last night. Oh yeah, it was the Libra Dugo story. Um, worst cause worse. It's quite long, actually. Um, I have to sneeze. I rarely know how I feel about Libra Dugo, to be honest. Um, I've read the Shadow and Bone series. I liked the first one well enough. The other two were horrible. And I've listened to Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom as audiobooks, and I loved them. I thought they were quite well done. Now, this story is somewhere in between. I felt like it had a good atmosphere, it had a very interesting theme, which I kind of like and kind of hate at the same time. And it reminded me a little bit of, um, what's that movie called? Um, the Cure for Wellness, which obviously is a newer movie, so, um, you know, but it has similar themes and similar feel to it, um, even though the movie got really crazy at the end. Um, this also got crazy at the end, but I felt like there was just like five pages missing of it. Like it just ended, but it wasn't really an end and I didn't like that. Though I think overall I would give it like three stars, even though I really liked what I've read. I just wasn't done with it yet and it was over. So yeah, that was kind of disappointing. Um, then I just um, finished reading the next story. Um, which was Hide and Seek by Megan Shepard. Again, I have no idea what um, other books she's written. Um, 
Ugh, I can't, I can't think, I can't talk, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so I started this story last night, but I decided to finish it now. Because I was just too tired and I just couldn't read on anymore. Um, that story, I really liked it. But I wouldn't say that it's like a scary story. Um, or maybe it is. Felt a little bit more like an action story. It has it has some slasher vibes to it, but yeah. So this is basically a story about a girl who dies, but then she has the chance to um, to kind of um, bargain for her life, kind of. So she has to win a game, and she decides to play hide and seek. And I love this idea. I think it's very original. At least I have never um, heard anything like it before. Um, and I like that kind of m mystical, th like, being that crow guy, whatever his name is. I think this idea is really cool. I don't know if there's anything like that in folklore, but it felt very much like folklore. Um, obviously, you get that little bit of a twist at the end, but it's not really a scary story apart from people dying. Um, but it's interesting, and I think I would give it like a four stars because I I really think it's a very original and creative story just because I've never heard anything like it. So right now I am at uh, a story I'm very excited about, The Dark Scary Parts and All by Danielle Page. Um, I've mentioned before I've read the Dorothy Must Die series this year from Danielle Page. And I loved it, um, so yeah, I'm really excited to read this story to see whether I like her writing style um, in general or whether I just like the Dora Sigma Die series. So we'll see about that. I will just, you know, keep on feeling sorry for myself and make some dinner now. Hey guys, I feel like total crap. Um, it's 5 in the morning, I've been awake since 4 in the morning. Um, I hate my life right now, but I've read um, the Daniel Page story last night. Scary parts and all. <coughs> um, that story was interesting. It had quite some similar themes to Dorothy Must Die with the girl that um, kind of has this nemesis in school, like the super popular girl who always kind of bullies her and stuff like that, it was very similar and I felt like the way it played out was also very similar. And then it also had some Penny Dreadful vibes with the whole um, arc of the kind of romance. Um, really reminded me of Penny Dreadful, which I love and I love that kind of romance, but I feel like it was a little bit too short. Um, yeah, but I love her writing style and I think this theme with the like bully girl in school and stuff, it's very interesting and there's probably a reason why she's putting it in her stories. Um, yeah, but I also really like the way that the main character realizes that even though this bully has done horrible things, she doesn't deserve that horrible things happen to her um, in return. So yeah. I like the story, I would give it four stars. Um, again, it just wasn't creepy enough for me for a collection like that. I mean, nothing compares with the Alice in Wonderland retelling kind of story. Hey there guys, I haven't done an update in a while um, because I'm still sick and it's very hard for me to talk uh, Yeah, longer than a minute. So I will try to do this update now, but it will include a lot of coughings. So we left off with this book, but I have no clue which story I talked about last. I think we left off with The Flicker, The Fingers, The Beat and The Sigh by April Genevieve Tuchoki. I still don't know how to say that name and I have fluff on my face. Obviously, um, I read the story. <coughs> this is about some kids that accidentally um, run someone over and kind of like that but um, I don't know how I felt about this story um, meh let's just say meh so next story is Fat Girl with a Knife by Jonathan Mayberry something like that 
um, <coughs> I like this. Um, I think it has an interesting take. Uh, and obviously it's not it's not like you go into it and it's this whole new thing that you've never seen before, but I just liked it. I don't know whether I loved the way it was written. I think the writing says definitely something that threw me off a little bit. But all in all, I think this was a fun story and I liked reading it. And then we have Sleepless by Jay Kristoff. This was kind of intense. Um, it's kind of hard to read because, you know, while reading you figure out what's going on. You're like, well, that's that's kind of sick. Um, yeah, it definitely keeps you guessing for a while. And I think it's one of the longer stories as well. But I really liked it, I must say. Um, I think it was a very good short story. Um, and I like that it was a little bit longer, so we could explore the characters a little bit more. It was definitely quite gruesome at the end and quite brutal. But that's kind of what I expected from Jay Kristoff, because that's what he does, I guess. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this story and I just made sure that I will check out other stuff by Jay Kristoff now. Then we have, we have M by Stephen... Bachmann, I don't know how you say that in English. Um, this story really didn't do it for me. Um, I was quite sick when I read this, but still it made me kind of fall asleep. Um, I don't know, I just didn't get along with it. This is kind of like um, historical fiction. It's about this blind girl. And I liked some of the aspects, like how she got blind, and I wished that would have been explored a little bit more. But you don't really connect to any of the characters. And I feel like this is kind of like a murder mystery, and having a murder mystery in a short story is very difficult, because you don't know the characters. And so when it's revealed who is the murderer, you're like, okay, whoever that is, I've never heard his name before. And that's kind of off-putting, I think. It's just not what I think a murder mystery is all about. So, yeah, that one that one was a fail for me. I didn't really like it. And then we have The Girl Without a Face, which I think is the last one that I've read so far, by Mary Lou. Um, that was very hard to read for me. For me. Um, this is kind of about sexual abuse. It's not graphic in a way, it's not really shown in the book, but you definitely know that this is what it is about and you get a little bit of the insight into what happened. Um, and it's basically about this boy who thinks that he didn't do anything wrong and he doesn't deserve to be punished for it, but maybe the ghost of the girl sings something different. So I think this was an interesting story, but I found it very hard to read because this is a topic that I generally struggle with. So yeah, be prepared for that. But it was a, a, a decent story, I don't know. Okay, so I have only a couple left. Now one book I finally finished is Through the Woods. Kind of kept putting it off. Um, I've talked about the first story, I think, and I didn't like the first story. The second story is A Lady's Hands Are Cold, and this is about this girl who's married. This is all historical fiction with a little bit of horror in there. So this is about a girl who's married off to a man, and when she arrives at his manor, he, she starts hearing all these um, songs and voices at night um, about a love that was killed. I like this song and I think the page with this song is very pretty. But apart from that, yeah, it has a little bit of a twist at the end, but you don't understand what's going on. Um, you're just there watching and you're like, well, okay, that was disturbing, um, but mm, okay. Like this is also very pretty. Yeah, but overall this didn't wow me. I think I would give it like a three star, something like that. Okay, when does this end? Okay, 
Next story I read this morning is his face all red. This is about a brother who killed his brother. Oh, no, I don't I don't know. I don't know what happened there. I don't understand this story. So I gave it like a one star. I don't like the writing, uh, the writing style, the art style. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. Next story is my friend Jenna. And this is about two girls and one of them... Um, speaks to the dead and she's very well known in her village and this looks a little bit like Jane Austen style but I do not like this um, drawing style I think the faces look really really weird um, so yeah and basically it tells you that it's all just a scam they, they pretend that she can talk to the dead and then suddenly some sort of shadow appears above her and you have no idea what's going on and it's so confusing and confusing. This page I really love though. This is what she scrabbles into a book. Like she's possessed or something. But yeah, it's just, you don't really know what's going on. You don't know the characters and it all doesn't really make sense. So yeah, whatever. Okay, let's be done with this. Um, then we have the last story, I think, which is The Nesting Place, and I think this is like the longest story of the whole book. Um, I think it's also the best story, just because you get to know the characters a little bit, um, but still, it just didn't wow me. It was like a three star. So overall, this book was a huge disappointment. I think the only people that will find this scary are people that never have anything to do with horror because these stories are just super generic they're just super well known there's no i don't know there's no surprise in there like okay i've heard this story like 10 times before great thanks also i don't really like most of the art um yeah just a super big disappointment now i've also mentioned that i wanted to read Shekel and hide this weekend didn't happen. <coughs> I got sick, so all I did was we watched the first season of um, Stranger Things, and now we're into the second season, and we'll probably watch some more as soon as I'm finished with this. But Jack on Hyde's still on my list for the last two days, so um, maybe I will get it done. I really hope so. Right now we have this huge storm here, and all the trains are cancelled again. So I'll probably drive to work today, um, to my other home, <laughs> and that would be almost like a three hour drive. So I'll probably listen to more of the Dream Thieves while driving. Um, I did listen to a good chunk of it this weekend, and I think with the driving I might actually be able to finish it soon, but I don't think I'll finish it um, in October, I'll probably finish it somewhat somewhere in November and I will probably talk about the whole series as soon as, as I've finished it completely. Okay, one thing I forgot, I finished <coughs> the third volume of A Silent Voice, which is a manga series um, and I liked it. I think I liked it a little bit better than the second volume and these are just quick little things I read when I'm at the hairdresser, so yeah. I, I didn't want to you know not mention. today is october 30 so um one more day um yesterday night i read another one of uh, the short stories um in the slasher girls thingy majingy whatever whatever it's called and i've read a girl who dreamed of snow by mccormick templeman um this was really interesting with well, definitely a story where I didn't really know where it was going. It had a little bit of a creepy factor um, but it didn't really feel Halloween to me just because there's a lot of snow involved in it um, and obviously there's some gender questions in there which I thought was interesting and there's also these kind of mystical ghost thingies which are creepy. I, I'd say and I, I liked the ending um, so overall I think I would give it like a 3.5 or 4 star um, but it wasn't as creepy as the one with the rabbits <laughs> so yeah if you really want something that creeps you out and scares you this is not the story for you so 
tonight. I want to finish the last two stories of this and be done with it. So tomorrow I can read Jekyll and Hyde. Tomorrow is an actual holiday here. Um, it has nothing to do with Halloween, but I still want to hey work. guys, I did it. I finished Slasher Girls and Monster Boys yesterday night. I just wanted to catch up quickly. I read the last two stories of it. Um, Stitches by A.G. Howard. Now this story was so creepy. Now, um, I don't like anything dismemberment. I think this is one of the scariest things of all um, and I I would say yeah I, this is just something I just can't deal with like I had this um, this family thing once um, it was the family of my ex-boyfriend and you know you meet these people you shake hands with them and when I shook the hand of one of the ladies I realized that one of her fingers was missing and it freaked me out so much and I tried you know not to show it because it's really rude obviously but it's just something that freaks me out and I don't know why like I'm fine with any kind of like you know this meant as long as everything's there I don't know it's just so weird but it's just it's so creepy to me so this story was like super creepy um, but I liked it <laughs> um, for the kind of eerie grossness part um, and I think it was very well um, executed and I liked the ending that you know you don't really know what the collector wants, but yeah, it was really fun um, and gross. <laughs> so I like that story a lot. I would give it like a 4.5 stars probably. And then the last one is on the i5 by Kendra Blake. And I really like this story as well. Um, this is about this girl that is in that diner. Um, and you don't really know why and what she wants but there is a dead girl in the dumpster and she has some kind of plan with it and you just go along and the overall um, yeah thing this is about it's again about you know violence against girls which I feel like some of these stories um, touched on that and it's very gruesome and very horrible um, to think that these things just happen um, but I like that story um, didn't like it as much as Stitches, but it definitely was that kind of creepy, um, yeah, weird story. Um, so I appreciated it, um, even though I think these kind of themes are always very hard to read about. So I would give it around four stars. So overall for this book, I think this is definite four star read for me. Some of these stories were better than others but there was really none that I did not enjoy. Um, I think the first one is still the weakest story for me personally and then the one with the Alice in Wonderland theme that's definitely the best one but I've heard that before so um, I was kind of prepared for that. Um, but yeah overall I think this is really good. Oh, and the other one I didn't like so much was the historical one. That was also not so great, but all the other ones were really good. So if you're thinking about picking this up for next year's Halloween, I would definitely recommend it. And I think I might check out the Christmas anthology. I think it was done by Stephanie Perkins because, yeah, I, I think these are good fun and I want to see whether I like the Christmas one as well um, even though it's completely different authors and stuff like that but I think like these kind of short story collections are a good way to look into what an author does and I think the Halloween one is best for me just because this is my cup of tea I think the Christmas stories will probably not be my genre too much but yeah this was fun I liked it I'll let you go and <laughs> have a good time now.
Hey there guys, so I just <coughs> finished Jekyll and Hyde. Um, I am super tired right now, it's only half past eight, but I have to get to bed. Um, so I've read a good chunk of these Penny Dreadfuls and I will keep on reading those probably next year or whenever I'm in the mood for a scary story. But for Jekyll and Hyde it was interesting. I know that um, Caro, I don't know her channel name right now, um, she has a German book channel. She has read this two years ago and then Sophie, also forgot the channel name, she read it most recently and I think both of them said something like um, that since you know this story by now that it's not such a big reveal um, at the end. <coughs> but I think it's still interesting to read the originals to these kind of pop culture things because Hyde is often portrayed very differently than he is in this book or in this story. So that was very interesting to read about. And I'm glad that I finally did. It's a very short story, it's only around 50 pages, so um, yeah. So let's do a quick, um, you know, just a quick wrap up of the scare along. So I have read a lot of pages of the Penny Dreadfuls. I would say it's around 150 pages because I skipped Frankenstein because I've already read that. And now I'm on page like 330. And then I finished Through the Woods, which is the graphic novel. Oh, and I read um, The Penny Dreadfuls for the challenge to read a book that was written more than 50 years ago. Then Through the Woods, um, <coughs> the graphic novel with the five short stories. Um, I've read that for the challenge to read a book with red writing on the cover. And that was a huge disappointment, um, but I've read it. Then I wanted to read Library of Souls by Ransom Riggs, and I've read that as well, and I was pleased with the ending of it, and I'm really happy that I finally got around to reading it because I had it for a very long time. Then I wanted to read The Unburied by Charles Palliser. I also, oh, and I read Library of Souls, sorry, for the challenge to read a book with... Um, creepy pictures in it. And then The Unburied I read for a book that has been very long, that has been on my shelves for very long. <coughs> and yeah, I also finished that. It was an okay book, but I was slightly underwhelmed with it. And then as a bonus book, I wanted to read Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, and I finished that yesterday night, so I also read that. And I was very pleased with it. It was very enjoyable and good fun. And then I also finished The Raven Boys um, as an audiobook and I loved it. Uh, it's one of my favorite audiobooks I've listened to so far. And I also got quite far into The Dream Thieves, which is book two in this series. And I think I have listened to about half of it by now. No, not exactly. I have listened to five hours and 30 minutes of it. And I have about seven hours left. Um, but I will listen to more of that tomorrow night. So I'll listen to another three hours. Um, so yeah, I'm making good progress with that. So this was my October reading vlog. I hope you watched part one um, and I hope even though I've lost my voice halfway through this was somewhat enjoyable. I'm going to edit this now and upload it and then I will move on to some wintry reads maybe. So we'll see. Um, if you want to know more about my reading I do monthly wrap ups usually. And then I also try, to, oh no, I also put all of the books I read on my German blog, but it's German, so not everyone understands that. Do, I can talk about movies quickly. Um, I don't think I've seen many movies in October, 
So one movie we saw in October was Logan Lucky, which is a super funny movie. It has nothing to do with creepy stuff. It was really good. Um, we had a good laugh, I think. If you liked Ocean's Eleven, you will like this, um, even though it's just not so sophisticated. It's just a little bit more funny and rural. I liked it. And then we also went to watch Kingsman 2, The Golden Circle, which was also super fun. I really enjoyed it. I was a little bit skeptic. Um, I thought maybe it would be, um, you know, not as good as the first one, but I still had a lot of fun. And if you don't expect like a very realistic movie, I think you can really enjoy this one. Um, and then for TV shows, we watched um, American Horror Story Freak Show, which was good, um, but very disturbing. We also watched, we started watching Grimm, I think it's the fifth season, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit meh, we'll see how it goes, we're only a couple of episodes in. I rewatched Stranger Things and loved it, it's just so good, I even forgot how good it was. And we started watching season two, we'll probably finish it next weekend if we can. Um, yeah, and I watched one episode of the old Goosebumps TV show, <clears throat> no, two episodes, and those were so cheesy. If you watched these when you were younger, please go and rewatch one or two episodes, it's so hilarious. So yeah, that would be all, um, if you have any questions or you want to let me know what you've read in October, feel free to leave a comment, leave a like if you enjoyed these videos. <clears throat> and um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.